Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am getting started on making our hot chocolate bombs for this holiday season. I've been selling these for the past two years and they do really good each year. So I'm going to show you how I make them. I'm just making like these simple Christmas ones. I've done like different ones. Some that look like unicorns, but I'm not doing any of the fancy designs. I'm just doing plain old Christmas sprinkled ones. The chocolate that I like to use is the Ghirardelli. I like to use the dark chocolate melting wafers and then the white chocolate ones because I make white hot chocolate bombs as well. So I offer two flavors and then I just make the little shells, fill them with the designated hot cocoa mix inside. I'll show you which ones I use as well. And then I put marshmallows in there. They are very simple to make as long as you have all of your materials. This is the white chocolate powder that I use for my white hot chocolate bombs. For the chocolate ones I use Ghirardelli um, chocolate powder mix and then I also mix it with a Swiss Miss chocolate powder mix that I get from Sam's Club in bulk. So that is what I use for the chocolate ones. For the white chocolate ones, I make the shell out of the white chocolate and fill it with the white chocolate powder. You're going to need a silicone round mat like this and that will make just a standard size of hot chocolate bombs. I will leave a link on my description with the Amazon um, affiliate link so you guys can see which ones I use. They're about, I think, two and a half inches wide and I find that's the perfect size to go inside of the cup. So basically the first step is to melt your chocolate. So I just kind of remelted this because I had already been using it and it got a little cold. So just melt your chocolate and then I add, it's kind of a two step process. I add a dollop of chocolate inside of the cup and then just start spreading it all around. And it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be gaps and holes where the chocolate hasn't um, completely covered it. But I'm going to show you what I do. Alright, so this is how it looks when I do the first coating of chocolate. As you can see, there are holes and gaps where you just cannot perfectly smooth in the chocolate like that. So what I find I have to do is freeze it. So I pop them in the freezer, that cools down the first layer of chocolate, and then I'm going to go back and finish off filling in all of the little holes that I left behind and the gaps to make it a complete full like um, sphere because you definitely don't want little gaps and stuff you don't want to make these too thin you don't want to make them too thick so I find just doing this two-step process works perfectly for the perfect amount of thickness and that second coating is what patches up all the little holes that you missed because when the chocolate is melted and warm it's kind of hard to get an even coating on everything but when you do the two-step process, you can go back and fix any of the mistakes. And it kind of adds an extra layer to the total hot chocolate bomb so that it's not so thin and flimsy. It won't break as easily. But if you try to like cover every single spot, you might end up with too thick of a shell. So you don't want that. And plus, it will be a waste of chocolate as well, making them too thick. You won't have enough space for your hot cocoa mix and marshmallows. So that is why I do the two-step process. All right, just pulled them out of the freezer. Now it's time for that second layer of chocolate, which is really just to fill in the gaps. You don't want to add too much at this step. You just want to add enough to fill in all of these little holes. And then I like to reinforce like the edges. I like to scrape my spoon just to make like the ends where the hot chocolate bomb is going to meet with each other a little tiny bit thicker. So you can see here, I am just filling in all of the spots, and I'm going to go around and do that to all of them. Alright, that is my second layer. Don't worry about it looking bumpy. This is just the inside of the hot chocolate bomb, so nobody's going to see this part. So you can see that I don't have any gaps in here, no holes, no thin spots where you can see the red of the silicone mat underneath. So I'm going to pop this in the freezer just for a little bit longer till it is fully hardened and we can pop them out. All right, that was in the freezer just for a couple seconds. It takes a very, very short time for it to cool down in the freezer. You can stick them in the fridge 
if you have time to spare and you're just making a couple of these you can even just put them like just room temperature you don't have to put them in anything cold but the coldness definitely helps harden everything a lot faster so I wear gloves for this part because now I am touching the hot chocolate bomb that the customers are actually going to be consuming. So to pop them out, it's very easy. Let's see if I can get this in the view. You just pop them right out and that is how they look. Nice and shiny and glossy on this side. I try not to touch the surface too much. And then I'm just putting them here for now. I'm running out of space actually so each hot chocolate bomb will obviously need, need two shells so I'm just going to stack them up in stacks of two like that and then we'll later join those together to make one hot chocolate bomb. So again these are as easy as just popping them up like that and then placing them aside. And then you can do this as many times as you want. If you have more silicone mold, molds, I only have one. I couldn't find my other one. But for every hot chocolate bomb you want to make, you're going to need two sides of the shell. So just calculate accordingly. This six whole tray makes three hot chocolate bombs. So however many you're trying to make, I'm making a whole bunch because I have lots of orders for these. Um, so I'll be just preparing all of my shells at once so that I can fill them up later. But I am gonna show you how I join them, fill them up and all of that. Okay, well I got another batch in the freezer. I'm gonna go ahead and make one of these from, from scratch so you guys can see how I put them together. The first step I like to do is heating up just like a baking pan. I'm gonna put it on like the lowest level just so that it starts warming this up and I just use a baking pan because I know it's heat safe and it's not going to burn. You want to put it on low but you also want to eventually turn it off. You don't want it to get too hot. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to try to show you um, how I do this. You're basically just melting the ends of the hot chocolate bomb. You have to do both sides so you can get them nice and flat and then um, you're going to Go back and do that again but with the filling already in there I'll show you what I mean it's easier to show than to explain it but for now I'm just getting this warmed up and then I'm gonna turn it off because I don't want it to get too hot and let me grab so I have my two shells here I'm just gonna grab it like this put it on this very quick for just a couple seconds and that gives you a nice flat edge to work with. I'm going to put it back down on my parchment, grab the other half, do the same, and I have flat surfaces to work with. Because if not, you can see, if you don't do that part, you can see how like bumpy and ragged the edges are. And that's going to make it hard to glue your hot chocolate bomb together. Let me go grab my hot chocolate powder mix and then I'll show you how much I put into these. Okay, I've made these. Last time I've made these is last year. I feel like I put three tablespoons worth, but I'm not sure. So let's just find out together. Because you don't want to overfill these too much. You still have to put marshmallows on the top. So that's one tablespoon, two tablespoons. I'm going to try to get maybe another half tablespoon in there. A serving size, maybe not so much. So like two tablespoons and then some so you can see that's how full I get them so a serving size according to the instructions of the hot chocolate mix is three tablespoons but you have to factor in that the chocolate is going to add a richness and a chocolate flavor and sweetness to the finished product once they and the marshmallows as well it all adds sugar and it all adds flavor so you don't have to put a whole three tablespoons in there. I'm gonna to top this off with marshmallows and show you how I seal them together. All right, for the marshmallows, same thing. You just kinda of wanna eyeball it. You don't wanna overstuff them, but I like to have plenty, just as many marshmallows as you would usually have in a standard cup of hot chocolate. Try to pat them in there so they're not loose. So that is about how much I put. And then I'm going to go back let me crank up my heat just to warm my pan up a little bit. What I'm going to do is this half is going to be the top for my hot chocolate bomb. I'm going to melt the edges of just this half. This is going to stay right here because it is chocked full with the hot cocoa mix and the marshmallows. So 
so I don't really want to move that around too much. So now I melted the top part and I'm going to join the two ends together. So just kind of press it so it starts hardening and I like to go over and just smooth out these edges with my glove so it kind of acts like a glue and then just let it cool just make sure there's a little gap here so if you have a little gap like this um, I just take a little bit more hot chocolate don't worry about it looking messy we are going to decorate these on top too so you won't even really see this part I just take some more chocolate like that and seal it off there is my one sealed hot chocolate bomb I melted some extra chocolate here you can do the top drizzle with any type of color chocolate you could do white chocolate drizzle I like to just use the same color that the hot chocolate bomb is it helps hide any imperfections in it and then I got three different types of sprinkles so you can just top them with whatever you like or just leave them just with the drizzle as a decoration alright so now it's time to drizzle it so I like to put a good amount in there so it looks like that and then just a little bit of sprinkles on top don't overdo it with the sprinkles and I also like to do luster dust on top and that definitely brings out the shine in the chocolate I'm gonna go grab that in my pantry right now but you can leave it just as is like this now at this step I'm just doing one to show you guys but I would do all this kind of like in a streamlined process since I have so many to make but for now I'm just showing you one I have this Wilton edible glitter I like to just pump a whole bunch of it on there it just adds a nice little shimmer and glitter to the final product you could do this right before packaging them or boxing them or you can do it right now while the chocolate is still wet this stuff sticks to it regardless so I put it all around and then once this is cool I will put them in a cupcake liner just like that and that's how I box them up or you can use like the clear the clear little um, treat bags or just package them up in boxes like multiple in one box you can also they fit perfectly inside of cupcake containers so any type of plastic with a dome lid or something like that pop them right in there and they fit perfectly so I've sold them that way before like in a bulk packaging but for these I'll show you how I package just one individually in a little gift box and I'll also leave a link to the gift boxes that I like to use because I ordered those off Amazon as well all right I have my little mini 4x4 boxes and I made kind of like a little nest with some crinkly paper tossed in some Christmas candies in there so in that little hole that I made I just drop in the hot chocolate bomb and that is pretty much it it's a nice little gift I like to attach a candy cane on top and a bow and that's how I sell them to my customers and it's like a full-on little gift set or stocking stuffer idea so let me close up this box and show you what it looks like and I like that it has the little window so people can see the hot chocolate bomb through the box as well so there it is it's the perfect size for just one individual hot chocolate bomb and then I also have some bigger boxes that I can fit like a pack of four in them but that is how the one hot chocolate bomb looks inside of the box and they open it up and it reveals the hot chocolate bomb and then I also make labels that have like instructions on how to use but that is how the finished product looks so it gives you an idea of how to make these the white chocolate ones are just exactly the same steps only just using white chocolate melting wafers and the white chocolate mix for the inside I still put marshmallows and all of that and I drizzle it and put sprinkles on top so it's just the same I hope you guys enjoyed this little DIY how to hot chocolate bombs are very easy to make you can also use different silicone molds I've done like little donut shaped ones or heart shaped ones for Valentine's Day so it all depends on the molds that you buy you can make basically any shape but that is how I make these Christmassy ones so I hope you guys enjoy your holidays and thanks for watching this video I'll see you guys in the next one
Also, if you're curious on how these work, I will link a video that I've made in the past in the in the description. Um, that's on our farm channel, and I put I actually put two videos on how they work. I put a video on how I make my unicorn white hot chocolate bombs, and then I also have a little shorter video where it shows how these work. So basically, you put these at the bottom of just like a standard size coffee mug. Then you pour hot milk over them and the hot chocolate bomb actually explodes and you can see the marshmallows come out and then you stir it and enjoy your hot chocolate. But I don't really want to mess this one up because I have a lot of orders to make so I'll just link those videos if you're interested in seeing how they work or just type in on Google or on YouTube hot chocolate bombs. So there are plenty of videos out there on how to make these but just wanted to put that in there as well.